Curious to know if I have more than one PCSK9 polymorphism. That's a very informed question, Eli. My recent blood work shows LDL of 30, HDL of 72, and triglycerides of 35. 29-year-old male. Knew that I had R461 polymorphisms per genetic testing. That is interesting. So you're not on anything and your LDL is 30. You know, it's interesting, Eli. You, you bring up a great point. The PCSK9 inhibitors like Repatha and all of those, they're little injections you take once every couple of weeks or once a month, and they have a huge impact on decreasing LDL. Not as clear their impact on inflammation yet at this point. I would not depend on them for impact on inflammation, but that's a different discussion for a different time. The PCSK9 inhibitors were a major step forward for pharma. And, you know, you may hate pharma, most of us do for one reason or another, but also for mankind. Here's the usual way that big pharma finds something and makes a drug. They find something that works like as a supplement, like red rice yeast or fish oil. You know, the original statins were made out of red rice yeast and Big Pharma found that. They started working on it and figured out a way to get it patented, their new product, and statins were born. How many billions of dollars have been made on statins? The group Vesipa in the Reduce It trial, they looked at that. I talked with the guys at Vesipa, the guys that ran the Reduce It trial last week. Hopefully we'll do a quick series on those. Very, very interesting story. I would love to give you a couple of little previews of that, that debate between Steve Nissen at Mayo Clinic, I think, and Deepak Bhatt at Harvard, and what's going on with us. Again, let me get out of that bunny hole for a second. Somebody asked me about it later, and I'd love to, to talk about it for a minute. But Eli's bringing up the point, do I have multiple PCSK9 genetic variations, or do I have a different one? Polymorphism is the term that he's looking at. As I was mentioning, the PCSK9, PCSK9s, you, most of you, when you hear that, you think drug, you don't think genetic variation. So what happened was Big Pharma did a series of genetic surveys. They found somebody like Eli. It was a young female cheerleader who lived in Texas, and they noticed that she had very low LDL. So they got the genetics on this lady and started doing some biological development work. That is how they came up with PCSK9 inhibitors, Repath and the others. Now, that's a totally different way from the way Big Pharma and mankind has developed drugs in the past. We used to just go out, we'd find stuff that was already working for something and then modify it and the big pharma would make too much money on it. So this is going the right way in terms of the longer arc of mankind. Eli is mentioning that he's got a variation which causes a very low LDL. Now, I mentioned people with FH, familial hypercholesterolemia they've got the opposite type of genetic variation. In fact, there are over 2,000 genetic variations that can lead to FH. You know, all but a few dozen of them have to do with this same group, the PCSK9 mechanism. PCSK9 is a mechanism where the liver sort of reaches up into the bloodstream and when an LDL comes by, it grabs that LDL, pulls it down into the liver cell and burns it. So Eli's got a variation that it just burns a lot of it. That's why his LDL is so low. People with FH, all but just a few of them, have damage to the mechanism that does that. It's a receptor that reaches up out of the liver cell, pulls that LDL down so it can be metabolized.